Hello folks and welcome back to the workshop. In this video I'm going to make a small parts cross cut sled for my panel saw. Um, anyone who's seen my last video will see this is a big machine and it's fantastic for doing the job it was set out to do but when you're wanting to cut small pieces an inch an inch and a half long and things like that it's not really designed for that so I'm going to make a little mini sled that'll be able to cater for my needs and I'm going to have a few little things that I can adapt to it as time goes by. So when I'm at the saw I just need to take a few measurements so I just need the overall height of the blade which is 70 millimeters. I need the measurement from just beyond center of the blade to the cutting edge is 150 millimeters and it's 400 millimeters from the blade to the edge of the sliding table. So I'm going to make the carriage to fit on the sliding table and just let it extend back. So I'm going to step over to the bench and I'm going to set this out on a few pieces of timber and I'll bring you over and I'll show you what I've done and why I've done it. Okay, hopefully this is coming out clear on camera. But this is the piece that I'm going to use for the base of the sled. It's just a piece of veneered MDF. And I've transferred the measurements I've got from the saw onto this and I'm going to use this then to mark the, the fence itself. So the first thing I did was I measured in the 400 from the end of the base to give me my saw blade cut. So that's where that's going to be. And I also measured in from the back 150 mil plus the thickness of the fence just for the clearance on the blade so that when the blade goes through I have enough material to add basically a cover over the blade so when the blade comes through you're not inclined to it's not going to be anywhere near your hands and the excess then I'm just going to remove which is here and here and from that then I marked the fence. Now for the fence I'm using a bit of oak. I like to use hardwood for this because it's less inclined to twist and warp but everyone to their own. I have also transferred up the blade line which is here and I've transferred the height of the blade. So that's the maximum height on the blade. So I've left enough material above that to make sure that this fence has plenty of support and to be rigid. And this is where I'm going to add the blade guard, as we'll call it. Just to lighten the thing down a bit, I'm just going to remove some material on the top. And I'm also have it set out, because I'm going to run two slots on each side of the fence, that I'm going to be able to add, say, a stop block, or I can use that to add other fences and attachments and templates to this in time to come but at least I have the basis to do that. So the next thing to do on this is actually cut those so I have a nine millimeter bit set up in my router so the first thing we'll do is I'll router out both of the slots and I'll come back to you then. There you go, two nice clean 
9mm slot caught into the fence with the router. Don't think I will say if you're using the router, especially on hardwoods like that, don't be trying to take too big a, a depth each time. I was only taking about an eighth of an inch on each pass in each groove. Other than that, you'll get chatter in the bit. You might even break the bit if you try and do too much, especially in a hardwood like oak. So, the next thing I need to do with these is I just need to cut this and the base on the bandsaw, give it a run on the sander and router around on the edges. So, we'll go do all that, and when I have all that done, we'll come back and we'll stick it together. Okay guys, there they are, all machined and sanded up and ready to go. I've also taken the opportunity to bore a few pilot holes for the fence and the blade guard, making sure to keep them well away from the line of the blade. I know these are close, but there's no way that the blade will ever touch them. And I forgot to show you as me making the block for the blade guard but that's it anyway it's only just a solid piece of two inch ash so I also when I was at the sander I run a small bevel on the bottom edge of the fence so that when it's sitting on the base there's a little gap at the bottom just to allow for little bits of sawdust and all that normally gets caught behind the block that you're using it just has some place for that little bit of sawdust to go so that it's not just affecting keeping the block in or out so I'm just going to put a bit of glue on these now and screw them from underneath and then we'll be ready to head over to the saw so I'll do this here now
And there you go. So I'll move the camera over to the saw and we'll see how we attach this on and we'll try it out. Okay guys, we're back at the saw. Now I need to fix this to the table and I'm going to use these two T-tracks that are already in the table, they're machined in the table. And to do that, I just machined two little ash slips that are a good snug fit into those grooves. Now I don't need this to slide, so these they're a bit tighter than normal because the whole table is going to slide. But to line these up, the first thing I want to do is double check what I've done with the sled. I had cut this square on the saw. I know that the, the fences not are square to the blade on this saw. So I should be able to use the fence to square that and that should be square to the blade. But before I actually fix it, I'm just going to double check that it is square to the blade. You can sit on a tooth and on a tooth and that is sitting perfect. So when it's again that fence, this is exactly 90 degrees to the blade. So the next thing I want to do is to mark a reference on the table so that when I position this that I can keep the two runners parallel to one another, that's all. So I'm just going to put a small mark on both sides, lift the sled out of the way. Now to position these I'm just using some double sided tape on the back of the, the runners. And guys if you don't have double sided tape in your shop you really need to go and get some because it is so so useful. They're a little bit shy of the depth so I'm just going to use a few coins that I have here just to keep these a little bit proud of the table. And now I can put the sled in at an angle down to those keeping it straight with the fence and just drop it down. And in the ideal world, they're stuck. Which they are. So now all I need to do is drive a few screws in those. Remove my coins. The money is hard to come by these days. Rip fence out of the way and just position it back. Like so. And that's, as you can see, is solid. And it slides on the table, not that on its own and if you want to be just curious you can double check it to make sure that it's square which it is so there's only one thing left to do and that's do the first cut now with the first cut what I'd normally do is leave the blade up to the maximum you won't always be using a the hub there and just run it till it's just past the highest part of the blade, which would be the centre of the blade, a little bit past that, gets to the fence here. And then you're into your block at the back as well. And if you don't, once you cut it there the first time, every other time when you go in, when you hit that dip, you'll feel the pressure coming on the blade. So you'll know to stop. So you won't be coming out through the back here where you have the blade protector on. So we'll run this cut. And then I'll move the camera around and we'll cut a few little bits and pieces and you can see the way it's done.
Okay, guys, that's how simple it is to make a cross cut set for the panel saw. As you can see, when the blade is stopped, if I push it in, it stops there. The blade doesn't protrude through this side of the slit at all. So just for a safety feature, if you're thinking about making one, definitely, definitely include a guard at the back for the blade to sit into. And it's doing what it's wanted it to do. As you can see by the little clip, you can cut little three eight and half inch pieces. They're no kickback. They're not flying all over the place. They're not trying to be pulled down with the blade because it's zero clearance at the end of the day. And it'll just sit out there and not do any harm to anyone. So it's ideal for that job. That's the, what I wanted it for. So in other videos, I will be adding to this. I'll put uh, stops on it and I'll probably put a few other templates on it for doing different things with small pieces. But I'll cover those in another video. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, maybe you should consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't already done so, maybe you might consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, it helps a lot. Uh, to try and get that channel to grow and uh, I was hoping to put out a video once a week within a day or two uh, so again all I can say is thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon good luck